All right, hello, welcome to today's presentation. I think we'll just pause here just for another few seconds as I see a few more attendees are joining. Okay, hello, and welcome to today's webinar. Today, we're gonna to continue our discussion around the value of the Autodesk collections. In prior webinars, we have given overviews of the capabilities of several of the applications. Today, we're gonna to dig into specifics and really showcase a scenario where we utilize non-inventor data in our workflow. I'm George Wright. I'm the Vice President of M2, and I'm joined by Brian Verbort, a Senior Solutions Engineer within our consulting team. Brian helps our customers align technologies and define workflows and leads many of our enterprise implementations. Who is M2? We're a technology process and data management consulting firm who has the luxury of bringing the audit of solutions to the manufacturing industry. Our mission is to help you navigate the technologies available and select the ones which will drive the most value for you and your organization. At a glance, we have a team of account executives, tech, technical consultants, and software developers providing real solutions to customers across and really throughout the country. We do this with a proven and consistent process to ensure a to ensure success in a very measured way. Throughout the, throughout the engagement or any engagement, ensuring stakeholders have visibility into our progress. Today, we're gonna to talk about Embedder. While there are a lot of capabilities we can cover, we thought we would focus a little bit on utilizing SOLIDWORKS data. We often get asked from firms, and actually very recently, as recent as yesterday, how to use legacy content and or third party plugins to translate data from a supplier, a customer, or a consultant. In many cases, the answer is you already have that capability within Inventor. In cases where a building product manufacturer is looking to publish Revit content, the source data is often comprised of many technologies in addition to SOLIDWORKS. So if really, without delaying further, I'll hand it off to Brian to walk us through kind of a real scenario of using SOLIDWORKS in an inventor workflow. Brian, I'll give you just a moment to set up. All right, great. And thanks so much for that detailed and helpful information. As mentioned, my name is Brian Verbort, and I'll be showing you a little bit of the capabilities of Autodesk Inventor and its ability to support competitive products. The capabilities and workflows I'll be showing during this demonstration are specifically with SOLIDWORKS, but keep in mind, these same workflows are also directly supported with other third-party products, such as Creo, UGNX, and also extend interoperability between Autodesk Inventor and other Autodesk products, such as AutoCAD, Alias, Fusion 360, and additionally, to the, the common neutral file format step. I'd also strongly suggest looking into joining the Autodesk Inventor Interoperability Project if you're interested in expanding the existing abilities Inventor already provides for working with Revit. Okay, so let's get started by opening an existing design file of the slide gate and auger assembly. This assembly is part of a larger design used in equipment which processes raw material for the extraction of ore. This Inventor assembly is made up of a combination of Autodesk Inventor models, SOLIDWORKS native files such as SLD PRT part files and SLD ASM assembly models. Our task today is defined by our customer who is looking to retrofit the hopper portion of this assembly. This design is already in service in their facility 
the equipment was manufactured and installed some time ago and it's proved dependable for the last several years. But during the last few maintenance cycles, the service team has noted excess wear and occasional jamming in the hopper. And they believe it's due to the current transition that's being used in the equipment. As a result, they contracted us to help develop a new, more streamlined hopper transition and plate, which should help improve reliability, reduce some of the wear and the potential for jamming. So uh, in addition to this, we need to provide a method for attaching the new hopper uh, to the existing building structure. As this assembly is loading into a vendor, you might notice a couple of things. First, it's somewhat large as far as part count. With Inventor, we can limit the overtaxing of system resources on assemblies like this by setting a threshold, which will invoke a performance improvement capability known as express mode. A specified value that we define can be set, and when enabled, Inventor automatically invokes this mode to improve assembly performance without really limiting the software capabilities in any significant way, but we'll see more on this later. With the assembly open, we'll now go to work on our new retrofit design task. Let's start by designing the new plate using Inventor, which will mate up the existing auger assembly with the new hopper transition. This task will start out by creating a new Inventor part model and giving it a name. We'll then use the existing SOLIDWORKS models to begin the process of sizing, locating, and constraining the Inventor plate model to the SOLIDWORKS assembly and their components. We can also use the features on the existing design to ensure that our new plate and the associated hole pattern will make correctly. Using this method, we're ensuring that the sizing and location of the plate and the hole features will automatically update and reflect edits that might be made to the mating SOLIDWORKS models that we're referencing here. A simple extrude operation creates the plate with its holes. We want to make sure that the hopper transition is centered on the new plate. So we can add a mid plane to the plate, which we'll use for that purpose later. We could wait and do it later, but I'm aware of the need now, so I might as well put that uh, in while we're in here. In addition, we'll add a few fillets to round over some of the sharp corners on our plate. The next thing we're going to do is bring in the native SLD PRT SOLIDWORKS file. This model was uh, developed by a third party contract design firm that we were collaborating with on another similar design. And that design seems to be working well in the field, so we would fully expect the same results with its use here. During the process of placing our file in our current design, we are provided with several options for the type of geometry we want to include, and we have provision for mapping file properties from SOLIDWORKS into Inventor. We can also use the preview to see the results of our selected options prior to placement. I'll adjust the location and orientation of the model as a convenience to avoid having to do it later, which of course I could. The curved surfaces of this model don't really provide any flat faces we can easily use to constrain the models together in the assembly. So I'll simply add what we need to get things positioned in the design correctly. And of course, anywhere there are faces or planes that we can use, we, we would prefer to use those when possible. Notice that I can access these planes and faces in the browser, even the ones that are available in the SOLIDWORKS file.
Note we haven't translated this file. We're simply using the native SLD PRT file as is in this design. We have a couple more constraints to add to be sure, but it looks like this transition is going to work well for us. The next step is going to be to pattern the transition to complete the design geometry. Both a pattern or a mirror would work for this purpose. Um, different approaches with the same result. Okay, so far so good. Next, we need to create a matching opening in our new plate. And I'll start that by activating our plate and creating a sketch. And then I'm going to change our design view type to help us here so we can more easily see, at least temporarily, some of the hidden edges of our model. These edges need to be referenced, and this will just make it simpler. We can easily use the existing geometry in the SOLIDWORKS model to help us define the opening. Working this way ensures good fit and that the resulting opening will adjust associatively if edits are made to the transition using the native SOLIDWORKS software. Now that the geometry for the opening is defined using the existing edges, I'll change the view back type to what it was. And we'll create the opening with a simple cut operation. There we go. It looks good. I'll commit the edits that we made to the plate, and then let's get started on welding it together. You might notice that the Inventor welding environment isn't available to me at the moment. What's going on with that? Well, remember that express mode I was just mentioning earlier? Well, we're still in that mode actively, since, and we've been in it since we started doing these, this design with very good performance and on an assembly of more than a thousand components. But at this point, the welding environment requires the full access to all the geometry, which we can easily provide by using full load. Typically, an assembly opens fully with all component data loaded into memory. For larger assemblies, Inventor uses this express mode, which can uh, expedite performance by loading only component cache graphics into memory. Once loaded, you can see that the welding environment is now available for us to use. We'll start the welding process by defining the correct material and then selecting the desired weld type. In this case, it'll be a fillet weld. I can then select the faces which describe the location of the weld and define the characteristics of the weld bead. This results in a physical representation of the weld, including mass. Next, we need to add a cylindrical section to the top of the hopper transition. This file is also modeled using SOLIDWORKS, which we used in the previous design. I'll follow the same process as before, place the model in our inventor assembly. 
once oriented and placed, I'll add some geometry to help in the assembly process of connecting this section to the transition. We'll use the existing geometry and planes again where possible and create what's needed to get everything assembled. The next requirement is to add the structural connections which attach the hopper assembly to the existing building structure. We have a standard support assembly that we use for this purpose in this type of hopper connection. So I'll take advantage of that for this purpose. This particular model is also a SOLIDWORKS model, but this time it's an SLDASM, an assembly file. Once selected and placed, we'll pattern the subassembly. We don't yet have the exact elevation of the building structure, so we'll obviously need that information. But likely the bracket subassemblies will be shipped loose, and the final welded connection to the building will be made in the field. Now let's briefly turn to documentation in the drawing side of things. I already started a drawing of the, this project earlier, so I'll just switch over to that document. We'll see the edits that we've made so far in the model reflected here. Notice that was a bit sloppy and some of the property info isn't filled out, so let's uh, reposition the parts list and add some of that missing detail to the assembly bill materials so that the parts list is more complete. The SOLIDWORKS property data would also populate to the parts list if it was present. So I'll need to follow up on that. One of our customer's requirements in addition to the equipment is for us to deliver both 2D drawings and 3D models of the design. We've got the 2D drawing already covered by adding some dimensions and notes to this Inventor DWG file and providing them a copy. However, the 3D design can be another story. It isn't really practical to send this model to them with its large size and the current level of detail. It's more than they need and simply doesn't make sense, difficult, cumbersome to manage. As such, we'll use a workflow which gives us the ability to easily remove unnecessary detail and significantly reduce the size of the model and complexity. The shrink prep command provides various ways to accomplish this task without eliminating geometry that's necessary for us to use to check for fit and function and installation. Some of these options allow us to simplify a model by filtering out features by size, components by size, holes by diameter, and many, many other options. And of course, you get a preview down here so you can see the results of your settings and options prior to applying the simplification to the design, allowing you to make some adjustments as needed or set additional criteria. Note that the final result is a single file with reduced file size, reduced complexity, and less detail. Well, that's about it. That's all I had to present today. Hopefully you found it valuable and informative, and uh, thank you for your time. Back to you. All right, Brian, thank you so much. Definitely do appreciate it. Uh, as we saw, let's see as I grab this back. So as we, uh, we, we spoke uh, before, uh, Brian's presentation. Um, we 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 talk about the question that constantly comes in of, I'm in an inventor workflow and and I have SolidWorks data. How do I convert? Um, the the reality is, also a lot of the tools, a lot of the functionality is built right into the inventor software. And there's you know certainly an understanding that there's you know sometimes a mixed use environment um, when it comes to technology. So um, you know a lot of times the conversion does happen um, fairly seamless, and it really does make uh, our answer back to our customers um, that much easier. So 
you know, certainly, um, you know, if, if you're in, if you're coming across that situation and you're, and you're, you're preparing to use a lot of content, you know, certainly reach out and we can, we can go over, you know, very specific scenarios or, or just, you know, talk through a general overview of how that process would work. But um, as we spoke about utilizing SolidWorks, there really are many more capabilities in Inventor and there's other solutions that are within the product design and manufacturing collection as listed here on my screen. In the coming months, we're gonna cover more topics. Um, I've highlighted a few, uh, NASTRAN, uh, the nesting utility and tolerance analysis, which are coming up uh, again in, in coming short months. However, um, you know, in, a, in the next slide, we'll have contact uh, information. So if you do have um, scenarios where you are uh, constantly uh, coming across where you have specific interest and you would like to see something come up uh, in one of our webinars, certainly uh, provide some feedback uh, and we can certainly queue that up. Or again, if you're specifically looking at some uh, specific, some functionality for your organization, again, um, you know, really, you know, feel free to give us a call. So before we conclude, I'd really just you know, put a reminder that the, Auto the Autodesk 2020 releases are really just around the corner. Um, I believe AutoCAD is out already and then the, 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 the other applications will be following suit. And keep in mind that a lot of times moving to a next version of software is a really great time to incorporate new technologies, new workflows uh, and new practices into your organization. So again, I really would encourage you to reach out. At this point, we'll stop here for a Q&A. If we do see a question or two pop up, I'll, I'll take those. Um, I don't see any in the hopper as of now. However, it's pretty common practice that, um, you know, shortly after our webinar uh, concludes, we get an email in, so we'll respond to those uh, accordingly. And again, it's con contact information uh, up here. Please email support at m2t.com or info at m2t.com if you do have uh, very specific questions. Please visit our website. Um, uh, there's uh, on-demand learning series up there of previous webinars. Uh, we did mention building product manufacturing and Revit. There is a series that was uh, put out a couple months ago about converting uh, data from Inventor over to Revit, which uh, you may find interesting. That question comes up. Uh, quite often, and of course, our phone number uh, is available here. Please give us a call. We definitely love to hear from our customers. And lastly, stay connected. Um, by connecting uh, with us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, and more, um, you will stay connected and, and receive latest information about technology, events, and coming promotions. So again, thank you for joining us. We look forward to connecting with you and seeing you on future webinars. Thank you so much. Have a great week. And we look forward to hearing from you within the 2020 releases coming soon.